Could you please tell me, I know you've heard this question two million times, how does the co-ministering thing work for you? After a heated debate over who is to superintend over the Minister of Home Affairs, it was decided that it should be co-chair. And then my colleague, the one I'm with here today, joined me. It is not an easy thing to call minister uh, a ministry and um, you know recognizing our backgrounds and I'm talking about myself and my colleague but I must say it has been made possible I think largely because of the characters that are occupying those portfolios ladies and gentlemen allow me to begin by pointing out that Zimbabwe has for the past 30 years past 30 years since its independence from the shackles of colonial rule and trenched indelible influence of a non-racial society. I'm proud to mention that in 1980, the new majority government enunciated a policy of reconciliation. Firstly, to our citizens, that it is possible for political parties coming from different political backgrounds to coexist. I am greatly honored and privileged to address you at this important occasion where we are commemorating Zimbabwe's progress in building a better habitat, free of injustice. Zimbabwe has always found refuge in South Africa. Sir, any updates you'd like to share with myself and our viewers about Zimbabwe? You know, we are pleased as Zimbabweans uh, that we offered ourselves this opportunity for different political parties to come together and form an inclusive government that is functioning at the moment. What I know in what is, is that can be said is wrong in Zimbabwe is the performance of our economy. This month, the inclusive government in Zimbabwe will turn 12 months, one year. I'd like to genuinely thank South Africa through His Excellency President Jacob Zuma for having played a very pivotal role in ensuring that Zimbabwe stick together again. SADAC and indeed the African Union who stood as guarantors to the arrangement that is in place now in Zimbabwe. You will recall vividly, I'm sure, that Zimbabwe was dubbed the best democracy in Africa before the land reform. And you will also vividly recall that President Mugabe was given many honorary degrees and many accolades. As a nation that has traversed 30 years of self rule and determination, we have been, we have been relentless extending the frontiers of democracy through nation building, despite the challenges littering the world. In fact, at the independence of the new government, the new government extended a head of magnanimity to the likes of former Rhodesian uh, Prime Minister Smith, Abel Mzorewa, Dabanin Stone, and many others. It is also imperative for me to state that in Zimbabwe, we have no human rights crisis, except different perceptions. They are certainly perceived in areas such as arrests, detentions, where we have had individuals alleging that their human rights have been violated during these arrests or detentions. However, however, most of the arrests and detentions are usually within the precincts.
lawyer is your government, or is the government in Zimbabwe, the amount of strain that the South African economy suffers because of the presence of Zimbabweans here. Zimbabwe is a country open to anybody. More importantly, we do not have any visa conditions for South African citizens intending to visit our country. <laughs> It is, has always been the trend of world over. Given the size of our economy, and if we compare that one with the economy of South Africa, ours is a very small economy. Sir, in your opinion, what is required to uplift Zimbabwe? I think firstly what is required is that we need to create con climate, a climate that is conducive for investment in Zimbabwe. We also need to demonstrate to our colleagues in SADC and the international community that we are serious about what we are doing as an inclusive government. But most importantly, we must also demonstrate that we have got the political will to want to make sure that this government works. The upliftment of Zimbabwe can come about when economic sanctions are lifted. Because Zimbabweans themselves have the capacity and the capability to do things for themselves. In Shona, we have got a say. So you come to Zimbabwe and see things for yourself. Zimbabwe will never be the same again after the formation of the inclusive government. The inclusive government in Zimbabwe was formed for one primary issue, and that was to bring freedoms to the population of Zimbabwe. I was just going to say to you, in the spirit of this upliftment, what is needed from the outside world to support? What is needed is that we be given, the sanctions be lifted, we be given lines of credit, like any other country. For the outside world to be able to to detect and support the achievements that have been made by the inclusive government. Many of our citizens now own or have access to fertile land, previously owned by the few. Because unless we have got financial support from the, from the outside, outside world, all the efforts that we are doing as a government will come to naught. The inclusive government was formed in Zimbabwe because we realized that unless we put our heads together as political players, <coughs> nobody will benefit from the confrontation that existed before the formation of the Zimbabwe government. The government of Zimbabwe has never had any interest or manifested any intention to comparatively acquire any business concern only by foreign, foreign investors or <coughs> local investors. What would you like to say to Zimbabwean citizens all over the world? I want to say and say very strongly and openly that they must believe in the government that is in place. That the government is determined to make sure that there is peace and tranquility in Zimbabwe. But most importantly also that we want them to come back home and help develop the economy. If you don't want to come back home, wherever you are Make sure that whatever you are contributing, whatever earnings you have, they must also come and develop your country, Zimbabwe.